welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining us. Today is honestly so bright, sunny, and happy. It snowed yesterday, which always makes everything feel so much brighter, and it always feels like a new beginning. So in today's video, I want to be answering a question that someone had commented on one of my videos a while ago now. I already answered to them, but I want to share my answer with you guys. And the question was something along the lines of, do you think that God calls people to forego marriage? He also said, and call them to a life of singleness for a higher purpose. So shout out to Josh Grant if he still watches my videos, I don't know. But thank you so much for asking this awesome question. So what exactly is the definition of forgo? I honestly had to Google it at first because I just wanted to make sure that I had the right definition. But the definition of forgo means to do without go without, to give up, or to abstain from. Personally, I'm honestly starting to feel a call for this myself. I mean, I do have a desire to experience what it's like to be in a godly and biblical marriage, but who knows? So to answer the question, do I believe that God will call some people to forgo marriage? My answer is absolutely yes. I do believe that not all people are called to be a husband or a wife. And some of us just don't even have a desire to do that at all. That's the thing about society. We, it always makes us feel pressured that we have to be married by a certain age or we have to be married in general but that's not true at all if god does not want you to get married or you yourself just don't feel like getting married and you don't want to then you don't have to so yes god does and will call people to forgo marriage to fulfill a higher purpose or calling. And there is nothing wrong with that. And honestly, it's actually more amazing because we get to have more one-on-one -on -one time with God. If you feel that God is convicting you or placing something on your heart about it, keep praying about it just to make sure that it is from him and then move forward from there on his timing. If you simply do not really have a desire for a marriage, then God maybe does have a greater plan for you. It honestly doesn't matter what society says. If you enjoy being single, embrace that season. Honestly, just as much as marriage is a great gift from God, same as singleness. Singleness is a huge blessing. Whoever would have thought that being single would be fun, but when we have God on our side, we have all we need. I also mentioned some scripture, which I'll leave down below in the description box, so please make sure to check those out. And we're gonna read a few verses today just to back up some information, but um, check out 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and Matthew 19 verse 11 and 12, which is down in the description box. All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 7 to, what, what are we gonna read again? Is this 7 to 9? Oh yeah, never mind. I apologize for my weirdness. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 7 to 9 says, for I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I am, but if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. So we know that Paul is saying this and we're assuming that Paul is not married. So in these verses, Paul is talking to the unmarried and to the widows. So people who were married, but their spouse had died. What basically what Paul is saying in a nutshell is stay. It is good for us to stay as is. So if we are married, stay married. If we are single, stay single. And if God wills for us to get married, he will send the right person at the right time. And if we are a widow, the same thing applies but it is okay to marry if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. If you are planning on getting married and you are with a person that God says you can and should marry, then that is okay. Because God would rather us get married than for us to be committing fornication. So the next verses we're going to be reading is in the same chapter and it is verse 34 to 35. And I wanna discuss these after. So verse 34. There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. So these verses are a little bit to back up what we said earlier about it is good to be single because we get to have that one-on-one -on -one time with God. Verse 34 tells us that there's a difference between a wife and a virgin. So what exactly does it mean by a virgin? So that would um, 
basically be a single person because God's original design was that we all remain virgins until we are married. That is why God now says, please do not commit fornication. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. So it is so true. I can tell the difference from being in a relationship versus being single. When we are single, we have so much more time to spend with the Lord. We are, whenever we start feeling sad or lonely or any of those kind of things, we instantly go to the Lord and we take it to Him. So we're building that relationship with Him. But rather, when we are married, we are seeking for ways to please our husband and to make him happy. So we don't have as much one-on-one -on -one time with God anymore because we are seeking to make our husband happy and to fill our biblical roles as wives. And Paul says he is not speaking this to bring a snare upon you to make you feel bad or make you feel like you shouldn't get married. He is just saying that he's just giving us some very wise advice so that we may be able to attend upon the Lord without distraction. Wait, I should have read verse 32. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. So it is so true. When we are single, we are just seeking ways to please God alone. I have no idea how long this video actually is. So let's read one more verse and that should pretty much be all. So Matthew 19 verse 11, uh, 11 to 12. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs, which were so born from their mother's womb. And there are some eunuchs, which were made eunuchs of men. And there be eunuchs, which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. I love this verse so much. I'm not going to go into detail on what a eunuch is. So that's what I want to leave to you guys to do a study on. I'll leave some links in the description box to some websites that explain exactly what a eunuch is if any of you are wondering. And I want you guys to try and figure out what this verse means. The Bible tells us that not everyone can receive this saying except to whom it was given. So there are three different types of eunuchs and I really want you guys to study what they are. In conclusion, we do not need to get married if we do not feel a desire or a call to do so. Links to the website and verses are down below in the description box and I'm counting on you guys to check them out. So please make sure to leave me a comment down below once you've studied it and checked it out and let me know how it went. I love you all so much and I'll see you next time.